Grace and peace to you as we gather for worship this day. I'm Reverend Diane Rue, pleased to serve this congregation of St. Paul's United Methodist Church here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I want to begin with a couple of announcements. I want you to know that uh, this week uh, of Thanksgiving, we will be um, sending to you some music for your Thanksgiving this year. In our Wednesday mailing, it will also be posted on uh, website and Facebook. Our musicians and we've led in a couple of prayers. So we've provided a way for uh, you to um, sing and uh, pray your praises for Thanksgiving this year. So watch for that. Next Sunday begins Advent and we are hoping that um, all of you will have Advent candles at home to light along with us each and every Sunday morning. We'll be led by some of our Sunday school families in that candle lighting. Um, so if you don't already have an Advent wreath at home, you might order one, you might make one. There's lots of ideas out there for simple Advent wreaths um, or any four candles will do. Um, and uh, we are providing some uh, Advent wreaths that have been made by uh, Becky Engebretson and other and candles to go along with that uh, for our Sunday school families to pick up today between 10 and noon. Uh, if you were unable to get here during that time, we will deliver those to our Sunday school families. So let's prepare uh, our homes uh, for Advent and that time of waiting in anticipation of Christ's birth. And just a reminder that we are uh, providing for a number of families through the Salvation Army for our giving tree again this year. You can sign up online or else call the church office. We've had a number of people uh, sign up, but we still have some more need. And then this morning, we're uh, pleased to uh, share with you some ideas for your thanksgiving prayers uh, shared with us by grace this morning hi everyone i'm going to teach you a prayer that i say every night before i eat at my nan and papa's here it goes bless us O lord for these thy gifts which we are about to receive for my bounty in christ our lord amen concerns to share with you today for our prayer time. Uh, we want to pray for Lori Verbort. We're glad that uh, she is home. Uh, she continues um, to have some now new treatments, uh, chemo treatments that she's undergoing uh, this next week. Karen Elsner was hospitalized this week with some heart issues, but she is now home and we rejoice in that. But she's also asked for prayers for her mom, Nina Van S, who fell 
uh, had a skull fracture, was treated in hospital, but then released back to nursing home for care. So pray for Nina. Fred Monroe is hospitalized as well as he's been waiting these weeks to be able to have a heart um, procedure done. And so there's been some complications. So we pray for Fred uh, right now in those complications and hoping uh, that all that stabilizes, that he can still uh, get into a Milwaukee hospital for surgery on December 1st. And we have the sad news uh, to share today that um, Merle and Kathy Colburn's son, Kurt, lost his battle with this COVID virus. Uh, he leaves a son and uh, his wife, as well as two grandchildren. And uh, we uh, offer our prayers for a peace that is beyond our understanding. Merle and Kathy, of course, were not able to be there. His son was able to go and be there at the time of his dying, and Merle and Kathy were at least able to say their goodbyes over a phone. So we pray for them, for comfort, for peace. Again, that passes our understanding. And I pray that we will do all that we can to care for one another in this time, to support one another in this time, that we might be people that reach out and do all that we can, especially for those most vulnerable around us in these days, and seek health and wholeness for all of God's people. So let us pray today for all of the things, all of the people who are our concerns, and even as we enter this time of thanksgiving, that we find within us places of gratitude that we can lift before God that celebrate this precious and very fragile life that we have been given. Let us pray today. We lift our hearts to you, God, in praise and thanksgiving for your gifts of love. As we count our blessings and acknowledge your goodness, our hearts go out to those who are in need, those who are sick, those who mourn, we pray especially for Merle and Kathy on the loss of their son, Kurt, and for all who mourn his passing. As we thank you for plentiful harvests and full refrigerators, we ask that the needs of those who are hungry will be supplied. As we thank you for jobs that provide we pray your blessing upon those who have lost their work or live in fear of doing so. As we thank you for opportunities and choices, for meaning and challenges, we pray that you would give us a sense of purpose to those who feel trapped. As we thank you for family and friends who love us and care for us, we also pray that you would befriend those who are alone and isolated. The abundance of the harvest is a symbol of the abundance of your love in our lives. May we live in a spirit of gratitude to you and generosity to our neighbor. Loving God, in this season and all year long, give to us the gift of a thankful heart. We ask this in Jesus' name, and we pray together the prayer that he taught us by saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. I read a devotion recently entitled, And Suddenly, and it began like this. Our power is shut off, and suddenly we become thankful for electricity. Our garbage is not picked up, and suddenly we become thankful for the garbage collectors and their weekly stop. Our water becomes contaminated and suddenly we appreciate a clear, pure drink. A good friend, gone. And suddenly we discover how much their friendship meant to us. I think most all of us have had one or more of those and suddenly moments. And frankly, I would bet that the last number of months has brought more and suddenlies than we may have thought possible. Suddenly, we appreciate what it meant to hold a hand or share a meal. Suddenly, We appreciate a maskless smile, a nursing home visit, an open hospital bed. Suddenly, we appreciate considerate exchanges of ideas and respect shown to one another. Suddenly. So why is it really? that we don't recognize what it is that we have? Why is it that we take for granted the uncounted blessings of life until we have them no more? Is it because we've grown used to being blessed? Is it because we feel somehow that we deserve all the good things that we've been given? Is it because that we have this notion that this, all of this, this this world around us, our families, our friends, our faith is somehow all of our own doing, our own creation? 
Or do we know better, but it's just that life moves so darn fast? Or maybe a better image is that life gets so darn complicated that we fail to stop and take time to even think about such things. To even recognize our blessings, much less take time to give thanks for them. Now, my guess is, if you're anything like me, it's probably a combination of all of those things and more. And you see, the thing is, I want to be a person of gratitude. I really do. I, like many of you, recognize a great and glorious giver of all of these gifts. I know a creator that I want to thank. Maybe we all do. And yet, we too find ourselves suddenly aware of how much we take for granted. Do we not? Our gospel lesson for today is a familiar one. It's the traditional reading for Thanksgiving. Luke's account of Jesus healing of ten men plagued with leprosy. These ten diseased men, outclassed and unclean, approach Jesus with a plea for healing. But we are told they do keep their proper distance. They stay in their proper place as dictated for one's unclean. Now, in response to their plea for healing, Jesus instructs them to go and to show themselves to the local priests, perhaps promising by implication that they will be made well. And indeed, as they travel, we are told, they are made well, cleansed of their infirmity. When suddenly one of them notices that he has been healed, and when he does, he turns back to express his gratitude. Falling at Jesus' feet, he gives thanks. Now remember, the other nine did nothing wrong. In fact, they did exactly what Jesus told them to do, which was to go on their way to the local priest, which they did, and once on their way, they too were healed. And you know what? They too had to have noticed. It, it's just that, I don't know, they didn't go back. They didn't know who to thank. Only the one, the Samaritan, returned to give thanks, and in so doing, he was blessed a second time. He received a second blessing. For Jesus invited the man to rise, to go on his way, for his faith, Jesus said, had made him well. And actually, the Greek root word used here, translated well, implies not just physical healing, but wholeness and even salvation. So not only was this man physically healed, as were the other nine, but this Samaritan, through faith, was made whole in a way that was deeper, one might say, than the other nine, a very significant second blessing. So I ask you, have you ever noticed how powerful it is not only to suddenly realize that you are blessed, but then also to name and to give thanks for that blessing? Maybe you're at a dinner with family or friends, and it's one of those meals that has been prepared with love and served and eaten with joy. A meal where you look around at those at your table and time just stops. And you are filled with this sense, overwhelming sense, of love and of gratitude and of joy, but it doesn't stop there. You don't just leave it there. You name that 
moment. You lean over to another. Or maybe you raise your glass in a toast and you say, I am so grateful for you, for all of this. This meal, this time, all of you. Thank you. Thank God. You see, in naming and proclaiming and in giving thanks, your original blessing is multiplied, is it not? In giving thanks, you and others are blessed a second time. Or maybe it happens when you're looking out over a beautiful sunset or Lake Michigan and the scene is breathtaking and you lean over to a grandchild or whomever else might be with you and you say, this is so beautiful and I'm so glad you're here to share it with me. And again, you multiply your blessings by giving thanks, by proclaiming thanks. You have been blessed again. Thanksgiving is like that. It springs first from noticing. Almost always suddenly noticing, but not stopping there. Thanksgiving begins with recognizing our blessings. But we are truly blessed, secondly blessed, when we speak and sing and pray and say our thanks. So that, my friends, is my prayer for all of us. Yes, all of us, and yes, even this Thanksgiving. Whatever that looks like, with others or alone, with plenty or with little, with health or without, in the midst of life, and even in the midst of death, that suddenly, suddenly, a blessing might appear, might be made known. And if such a moment does wash over us, if such a moment does wash over you, wash over me, I pray we don't stop there. Let us be like the Samaritan who, yes, suddenly knew of his blessing and made his gratitude known to his friend and his Lord. And in so doing, he was blessed again and was indeed made whole. May it be for us this day, this Thanksgiving, and always. Amen.